All right, guys, so the TU10 patch notes are now live, and I want to go through them. There is a lot here, so I'll kind of want to hit the ground running. But if you do want to support me outside of YouTube, you can on Patreon. There is a link down below to that. With that said, if you want to make sure you're up to date with all Division 2 news and content and stuff, then you can subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll, I'll be able to give that to you. So let's start with uh, the first part here. For the first PTS phase, we'd like feedback on these topics in particular. Weapon balance, gear set balance, PvP damage, and time to kill. Difficulty, player power, and loot and rewards. And the following content will be disabled during the TU10 PTS and is not accessible to participants. Uh, Raid 2, Operation Iron Horse, and Season 2. And if you didn't know, the PTS goes live on PC today at uh, 2 p.m. CEST. So if you're in the UK, it's 1 p.m. So new exotics. Um, now, I've covered the double barrel rifle, the Ravenous before, and the Regulus, but we'll go for the two new ones here especially. An SRS sniper rifle called the Mantis. Your scoped view displays additional information about enemies not targeting you. Headshot and weak point damage against enemies not targeting you is amplified by 50%. Headshot kills reset the cooldown of the decoy skill. This bonus will wait until the decoy goes on cooldown, if currently active. So this is particularly good for the, the decoy because you'd throw out the decoy the NPCs would obviously target the, de the, the, the decoy and then you would get this buff of 50% uh, if you hit a headshot because you know you're scoped in on them whilst they're targeting someone else sounds cool we then got the mask called the vial status effects also apply a damage over time debuff for 10 seconds total damage dealt is equal to 50 percent of your concussion grenade damage and increased by your status effect attributes this will be good for pve and i think a lot of people have been saying that status effects for pve uh is something that they want more of if that makes sense or more power possibly but this will need to be balanced for pvp because it's all the uh, status effects in pvp are awful uh the ravenous on trigger pull fire both barrels at once when fired from the right shoulder, hits at offensive primers and defensive primers when fired from the left shoulder. Hits from one shoulder will detonate all of the opposite shoulder's primers when present. When detonated, each offensive primer deals 1% weapon damage, while each defensive primer grants 4% bonus armor and 10% amplified damage to armor plates for 5 seconds. Primer effectiveness is doubled at 10 stacks. That's going to be what the last is basically going to be like whiplash, where you're going left to right and left to right, basically depending on the situation you're in. That's going to be uh, hard to manage, but I imagine that if you get good with this, this could be good. Uh, Magna, uh, Magnum Revolver, Regulus. Headshot kills grant a 5 meter explosion, dealing 400% weapon damage and applying bleed to all enemies hit. And it's got high base damage. Again, <laughs> this could be a problem in PvP, so it'll need to be balanced. But I can imagine in PvE, this will be quite fun to use. It says, developer comment, the Ravenous and Regulus are exclusive to the upcom uh, upcoming Operation Iron Horse, but are present on the TUM PTS for balance and feedback purposes. Okay. New gear sets. Eclipse, Protocol, Core, Skill Tier, Yellow. Uh, two, uh, the two pieces is plus 15% status effects, three piece is plus 15% skill haste and plus 30% hatchet protection. Uh, the four pieces indirect transmission. Enemies that die while affected by your status effects spread those status effects to another enemy within 15 meters and refresh 50% of 50% uh, the duration. The chest talent peripheration proliferation <laughs> increases indirect transmission range from 15 uh, meters to 20 meters and refresh percentage from 50 to 75 percent and the backpack talent symptom aggravator amplifies all damage you deal to status effect targets by 15 percent now it's worth noting that normally whatever you get for the gear sets especially if it's coming in the um coming in the the, the, the next raid gives you an indication as what to expect from that raid and i think we already knew that status effect was going to be a big uh, big thing for the next raid uh, so hazard protection is going to be needed foundry bulwark core blue um, and it's two pieces 10 percent armor three pieces uh three percent armor regeneration four pieces makeshift repairs whenever you or your shield take damage 40 percent of that amount is repaired to both over 10 seconds chest talent process refinery increases makeshift repairs from 40 to 60 percent Backpack talent, improved materials, increases makeshift repairs sp uh, speed from 10 seconds to 6 seconds. And then we got future initiative, uh, core skill tier. Uh, two, uh, the two piece is 15% uh, repair skills. So that's, this. no, not the same. Uh, three pieces, 15% skill duration and 15% skill haste. Ground control increases you and your allies total weapon and skill damage by 15% when at full armor. When you repair an ally, you and all allies within five, uh, five meters of you are also repaired for 6% of that amount. Chest talent, tactical superiority, increases ground control damage bonus from 15 to 25%. And the backpack talent, advanced combat tactics, increases ground uh, control proximity repair from 60 to 120%. So this is going to be a very good um, gear set, I imagine, for uh, kind of like a group play, someone that's assisting others. New gear brand, Walker Harrison Co. Core, weapon damage, uh, red. One piece, 5% weapon damage. Two piece, 5% damage to armor. Three piece, 5% damage to health. That is an all-out DPS um, 
brand and that's going to be something that people are going to be using a lot of especially these two damage to armor and uh weapon damage damage to health isn't as important as these two here so yeah that's going to be important new talents weapon talent future perfect weapon kills a grant uh, plus one skill tier for 15 seconds stacks up to three times okay uh weapon kills at skill tier six grant overcharge for 15 seconds overcharge uh cooldown is 90 seconds so this could be used for a uh dps skill hybrid um interesting a uh, weapon talent in sync hitting an enemy grants fi uh, plus 50 percent skill damage for fi five seconds using a skill or damaging an enemy with a skill grants plus 15 percent weapon damage for five seconds damage increases are doubled while bu both buffs are active at the same time backpack talent adrenaline rush when you're all within 10 meters of an enemy, gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds. Sacks up to 3 times, cooldown is 5 seconds. That's interesting. Uh, so that could be good. Chest talent, headhunter. After killing an enemy with a headshot, your next weapon hit uh, within 30 seconds deals 125% of that killing blows damage to, in addition to it. Holy smokes. This damage is capped to 1,500% of your weapon damage. Oh my. That sounds incredibly strong. Um, because it's such a long period as well, 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, gameplay changes missions. Reduced how many elites will spawn in the following missions. Manning National Zoo, Coney Island Ballpark, Amusement Park, Camp White Oak, White Oak Space Administration HQ, Emergency Bunker, Wall Street, Liberty Island Pathway, Stranded Tanker, and the Tombs Loot General added all new Season 2 uh, weapons gear to General Loot Pools. Targeted Loot increased targeted loot drop chances for all mission and control point difficulties. Okay, that's good. Added new Season 2 brand to targeted loot rotation in New York. Named items increase named item drop chance in regular dark zone loot. Okay. Increase named item drop chance in targeted loot everywhere. Okay. So, again, that's uh, good. Exotics added new Warlords of New York Season 1 Exotics, excluding the uh, Bighorn to targeted loot. And I, I covered this on um, Wednesday's uh, recap. Added Warlords of New York Season 1 Exotics, excluding the Bighorn to general loot pools. Coat's mass drop from coating no longer has a minimum season level requirement. Okay, that's good. Control points. Removed regular weapon gear loot containers not scaling with difficulty from control points. Increase the amount of scaling loot from the big control point reward container. This is very good news. Vendors. Added named items to both open world and dark zone vendors. Increased prices for named items. Increased item quality for all vendors. Vendors no longer sell superior quality items at maximum level. Shade levels. Added fill, uh, proficiency cash to shade level up after reaching the maximum season level. Increased crafting material rewards for spending shade level points in in the scavenging category okay i think there just needs to be an increase in the crafting materials in general the amount that you can hold but also there needs to be more uh ways to use those crafting materials i suspect most people are, are full on that uh, as it is conflict added season shade experience gain on conflict leveler okay that's good uh rogue agent encounters every rogue agent killed now will drop loot good rogue agent encounters no longer occur during time trials okay there's no there's nothing here about actually increasing uh, the uh how good that loot is for when rogue agents drop which is a bit disappointing because i'd hope that that's what they want to do control point officers revive players revived by control point officers will now have 80 percent of, of their armor restored previously zero percent that's good reduce the likelihood of control point officers now being down in combat okay bounties acquired by speaking to the characters in the open world will always be set to the difficulty at the time of the acquisition or higher that's good this affects the snitch and civilians rescued during the public execution or uh, rescue living world activities scheduled bounties such as daily and clan bounties are unaffected comment bounties acquired in the open world should always provide challenge and loot appropriate to the world they are being acquired in up in your global difficulty now has the added benefit of improving all bounties uh, you acquire within it that's very good news projects new season pass holder project slot season pass holders now have access to an exclusive daily uh, mission which provides a large bonus to xp okay Weekly Shade Requisition Project. Endgame players at World Tier 5 and Level 40 now have Weekly Supplies Donation Project, which rewards them with an exotic cash. Legendary Mission Project. After TU10 completing any, any Legendary Mission will grant you the Weekly Legendary Mission uh, Project slot. Completing the designated leg Legendary Mission will reward you with an exotic cash. Okay. PvP. Oh, let's get on to this. Uh, this is the first pass at addressing time to kill in PvP via global individual weapon balance adjustments, and it's not necessarily representative of final values. We will be close in monitoring and PTS feedback in order to make further adjustments as needed with additional tuning plan for PTS2. Global modifiers, increased MMR PvP weapon damage by 12%, reduced global weapon uh, PvP weapon damage by 20%, reduced assault rifle PvP damage uh, weapon damage by 15%, reduced rifle PvP damage by 5%, reduced SMG PvP damage by 10%. So I presume that everything's being reduced by 20%, but then we're, ne we're then getting a further 5% for rifles, 15% for um, 
assault rifles, etc. Skill modifiers reduce bleed damage from Stinger Hive, Mortar, Turret, and Seeker Mine by 75%. Weapon specific, increase double barrel shotgun PvP damage by 20%, reduce pestilence PvP damage by 10%, reduce classic M1A damage by 5%. With TU10, there have been significant buffs made to these base damages of, of assault rifles, SMGs, and shotguns in particular. In order to prevent those weapons from becoming overly powerful in PvP, we've had to lower their PvP damage modifiers to compensate, and that makes sense. Assault rifles are still tuned to be 10% stronger than default in PvP in order com to compensate for their innate damage to health bonus being less useful against players when compared to other. Weapon types. Upcoming PvP balance adjustments. Negotiator's Dilemma. Reduce the range at which marked targets can damage each other while critically hit. PvP only. Added visual UI feedback when in range of, uh, of another marked target. Imperial Dynasty. No longer automatically applies burn status effect to the nearest enemy in range. Now requires maintaining range and line of sight for 3 seconds between the holster uh, bearer and the nearest enemy before applying the burn status effect. And then there's a, uh, a UI thing for that as well. Uh, comment, this should help address the lack of contextual feedback in PvP and add a much needed window of opportunity for current play or potential to avoid incoming effect. Entirely pestilent. Plague of the Outcast damage over time effect no longer triggers True Patriot's white debuff armor repair effect. It says, comment, while we like to embrace emergent, emergent or unintended mechanics when the end result is unique and fun gameplay, True Patriot's white debuff explicitly states it requires shooting the debuff target in order to receive the armor repair effect. Pestilence um, DOT managed to bypass this restriction, making it and true patriot, especially when combined with incoming repair scale to the disproportionate levels of power when used together. Now I don't play PvP much anymore, and I'm gonna say that this doesn't sound like enough. I think specifically uh, status effects don't appear to be, I, I know they're meant to be adjusted a bit, but I, I don't know. You guys let me know you play PvP, I don't know. Weapon balance. Weapon handling changes. 1% weapon handling now gives 1% accuracy, stability, reload speed, and swap speed up from 0.25%. Reduce the maximum amount of weapon handling rolled on gear by 4% to a maximum of 10% at level 40. Develop a comment. In the current meta, weapon handling on gear is considered a dead stat with no significant benefit. In TU10, equipping a piece of gear with 10% weapon handling will now give you 10% accuracy, stability, swap speed, and reload speed. This is good because I think... Ultimately, they're right. Weapon Hannon was a dead stat. And if there's anything they can do to help that, then that's good. This should hopefully make Weapon Hannon a strong uh, complementary attribute for players looking to increase their overall accuracy and stability, etc. Good. I like that. Uh, developer comments, sidearms, and exotics are still being adjusted and will be updated uh, in PTS Phase 2. Some damage increases are large and might be tongued down after testing. Uh, okay. Uh, they go down in order. So the AKM got the, the biggest buff here. And then we've got the F2000 military AKM, Black Market, Foul, 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 SOCOM, MK16, Tactical, MK16, MK16, Org, Honey Badger, FAMAS. So, okay. So, every single one is getting a buff. The AKM is getting the biggest one here. The lowest one is the CTAR uh, on here. But you can see all the numbers here. There's, I'm not going to go through these. I'll be here all day. Uh, the LMG, the classic M6C, has had the most. The lowest is the MG, MG5. Um, the infantry MG5 had a 3.2% damage increase. Uh, no surprise there actually, because the MG5 is by far the strongest uh, LMG. So really no surprise there that the uh, the low rate of fire uh, LMGs have got the biggest buff there. Um, the Negev's got a little bit of a buff, which is good. MMR, the model 700, has had a 15% damage increase. Again, that's good, because uh, I think the slow rate of fire snipers are just really not viable at the moment, whereas the fast rate of fire ones are. But we've still seen a buff to like the SVDs, so that's good as well. Rifles, uh, the UIC 15 mod, 20%. Uh, there's a lot of big increases here. The 1880, uh, 6, uh, 21%, Lova, 12%. Um, the M16A2, no changes. SOCOM M1A, no changes. And then we've got some increases here to the USC, the Urban MDR, Military MK17, Police MK17. And the Classic M1A has had a 12% increase. SMG, Tommy Gun, 40% increase. No surprise, uh, because it's awful. PP1, uh, PP19 as well, Enhanced PP19. What's got the lowest here is the uh, Tactical Vector SBR. Got the lowest. And that, again, it kind of goes at anything with the highest rate of fire gets the, the, the lowest uh, increase because um, that's just the way it is. Shotguns, M870 Express, 23% damage increase. And then we got the KSG with the 9% damage increase. A lot of numbers there. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll be here all day, guys. Gear set changes. Wow, this is going to be a long video. We're almost done, guys. <laughs> Gear set changes. Main talent. Hollow point ammo is no longer dropped on kill and instead automatically added to your active weapon uh, when killing status affect afflicted enemies. 
backpack talent, new, trauma specialist, increases the duration of your bleed status effect by 50%, and all bleed damage done by 100%, increased three piece reload speed bonus from 20% to 30%. So with this in mind, if you're gonna get an extra 100% damage, is that gonna mitigate against the changes in PVP? I don't know. Tip of the spear, main talent PVE, aggressive recon's weapon damage buff is now gained when dealing specialization weapon damage instead of a specialization weapon kill. Okay, that's good. Main talent PVP, aggressive recon's weapon damage is now gained when dealing grenade damage instead of grenade kill. Uh, backpack talent, signature move is new, increases specialization weapon damage by 20% and doubles the amount of specialization ammo generated by aggressive recon. Okay. Um, it's good to see there's Summit here that's going to increase your specialization damage, although I think generally specializations need an overall buff, as it is. Uh, Aces and Eights, main talent, poker face, backpack talent is now a baseline effect. Flip an additional card on headshots. New backpack talent, Ace in the sleeve, amplifies one extra shot when revealing your hand. System Corruption, main talent, now repairs 20% of your armor in addition to granting 50% bonus armor. Increases total weapon damage by 1% per 5% bonus armor gained, up to 20%. So you can get an extra, what, 4%? Strikers battle your main talent, reduce the number of stacks lost on miss shots from two to three, from three to two. Sorry, uh, again, this is good. Backpack talent no longer reduces the number of stacks lost on miss shots. New increases total weapon damage gain per stack of strikers gamble from 0.5 to 0.65 percent. So strikers could become a lot more viable uh, now because one of the main issues was it was hard keeping up the stacks, uh, and this should be made uh, easier. Plus, now it doesn't matter if you miss; you're not going to. Uh, so wait there, so reduce the number of stacks lost on missed shots from 3 to 2. No longer reduces the number of stacks lost on missed shots. Oh, that's if you put the backpack talent on. So if you've got a 5 piece, if you've got the backpack talent on, then yeah, you're not going to be penalised for mission shots. So this could be strong. Brand set changes, overlord armaments, increased 2p accuracy bonus from 10% to 20%. Uh, Douglas and Hard, uh, Hardin, 2p stability bonus from 10 to 20%. Uh, free piece accuracy from 10 to 20 percent fenris reload speed bonus from 10 percent to 20 percent stability bonus from 10 percent to 20 percent this together with a change up to on ground directive was done to make accuracy stability reload speed have more noticeable benefit uh, on brand gear set bonuses alongside the improvements to weapon handling okay talent changes leadership bonus armor increased to 15 percent from 12 percent spike skill damage duration increased to 15 seconds from eight seconds reformation or reformation skill repair duration increased to 15 seconds from 8 seconds creeping death no longer goes on cooldown if there is no valid uh, nearby enemy to apply to status effect to status effects applied to now properly copy this uh, source status effects damage and duration skill changes when shock traps active duration ends it call its cooldown is refunded an equal number of seconds that it was active stinger hive mortar turret and explosive seeker mine now display its bleed damage and duration and there is a bunch of fixes here which i'm not going to go over because this video is already crazy crazy long but there is a lot of changes here and it's hard to actually compute until we get in the game and start this stuff um the only thing for me really is that i don't know if these uh, there's enough pvp stuff here at all um but aside from that I'm, I'm generally okay with all of this stuff the rogue agent stuff i would have liked to have seen a buff to the uh, the, the the loot that you can drop uh, the max attributes and, and the minimum and stuff but Again, we'll have to wait and see because there is a phase two to this PTS. So we'll have to wait to see what's coming with that. Uh, but that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks very much for watching and until the next one, epic out.